Welcome people. Today I'm going to take a look at realistic terrain generation. And I'm going to look at the same seed in two different, I'm sorry, in both vanilla and realistic terrain generation. I am looking at the 1.0 release of RTG and I'm comparing it to vanilla. And I'm going to look at a seed that has all of the biomes within 2,000 blocks. And the first thing to note is there's a very large um, desert and savanna, savanna area. This is the hot vanilla zone. There's a very good sized um, mesa area and a frozen area. There's a couple of spots where you can see the um, extreme hills, as well as the crazy savanna M's in the savanna areas. Swamp shows up over here. This is a mega spruce, I think, or mega taiga. And we actually managed to get one of the rare RTG volcanoes over there, which I'll take a look at as well. Well, the first thing is take a look at the rivers. RTG makes very few rivers and they're very large rivers. They're wide. You can see them easily even on this scale. Vanilla rivers, there's lots more of them, but they're tiny and they're scattered. I want to point out, by the way, that I am using the default settings for RTG. The default settings make much fewer caves and much smaller cave systems. So it's not like vanilla where they overlap as, as a rule on, as the norm. They are much more separated, smaller, tiny. The next thing to note is the vanilla oceans contain lots of little islands. You can play an arch, 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 archipelagical arch, chain of islands uh, game with vanilla. With RTG, they're gone. Sometimes this means that um, where a larger island is has little tiny outcropping, they shrink significantly. Other times, the edges become nicer, cleaner smoother. All right, so let's take a close in look. Well, these are the signs of the um, Savannah Plateaus. And there was another one of them as well. The other places where the Savannah Plateau, these are the M's. These are the crazy uh, vanilla Savannah Plateau M's that go all over the place. Sometimes you get a mountainous. Other times you get this banded terrain. Here is a close-up of the realistic terrain generation volcano and the area that is the um, mega taiga I believe and in comparison in vanilla the area looks like this this is the vanilla swamp over here this is the realistic swamp over here. Interestingly, we got a witch hut here, but not here. Here is the a look at the ice section. This is an ice spikes and ice... Uh, probably a cold taiga. 
So this is the vanilla, and this is the realistic. The first thing you notice is that the vanilla is a much more jumbled terrain layout, landscape, height map. The realistic is much smoother. That, of course, is one of the big things about the realistic terrain generation is that it's a smoother landscape. I'm surprised to see this large area in the middle of the spikes that is basically clear. It's not clear in the vanilla. Equally surprising is this section in vanilla that got just turned into regular. The smoothing basically turned it into land instead of frozen ocean, frozen river, whatever that is. Now the rest of the area, I cannot tell the vanilla stuff very well just by looking at it. And I haven't played around with the RTG stuff at all in this area. I suspect that this area is the Ice Mountains, is what it's called in vanilla. The actual terrain, if you look at the um, terrain information in the biome definitions, is more of hills than mountains. But it also looks like RTG actually turns it into real mountains, those look much taller. And once I actually go in, we'll take a look at it and see just how tall it actually is. One area that has gotten fairly large changes is the mesas. And mesas in vanilla represent such things as the Australian Outback, the Grand Canyon, the Bryce Canyon, that type of thing. You have flat sandy areas, the plateaus and the plateau Fs. Then you have these slightly lower height um, plateau Ms and FMs. You have the Bryce spikes and things like that. In the realistic terrain generation, however, the Bryce especially becomes uh, what I think is a mess. It's hard to see from this picture. We'll take a good look at it in a moment. But basically, these are um, areas where the ground is a mix of sand, grass, and dirt. The Bryce structures instead of being a few big things that stand out, are lots of little things that form a maze-like set of barricades that spread into nearby areas such as the nearby beaches. Just in general, where you have the various plateaus in vanilla, you have these for the plateaus. And again, they have trees at the top of the plateaus and a mix of grass, dirt, and red sand down at the bottom. And oddly, I don't know if this is intentional or an accident, in 1.0, the grass, the dirt blocks that are used are the dirt blocks that grass can spread to. So areas where you are having it just loaded and sitting, it will spread and be nice and green. Areas that have not been loaded tend to be rather brown with very little grass. Mushroom Island. In realistic terrain gen, Mushroom Island and Mushroom Island Shore are basically combined into one terrain type. And it's hilly, you have high hills, but it tends to be gentle slopes over most of it. It's steep along the cliff edges, but within the primary area, it's smooth. 
in contrast, the vanilla mushroom islands tend to have very sharp um, cliffs, very strong changes in elevation, and the shores don't generate the same as the um, hills. I mean, here is an example of where a mushroom island shore runs through the middle of a mushroom island, and there's another couple of spots as well. So there's clearly flattish and hillish with very sharp uh, hills. Very significant difference in the layout.